it's banned books week so I thought once per day I would give a reading of a section of each of a number of banned books. I'm sort of curious to see how YouTube will handle them, whether they will be demonetized, whether they will be censored, delisted, what, what will happen to them? But it's interesting to see what might happen to things that were banned or considered salacious in the past and may still be today. So where better to start than 120 Days of Sodom by the Marquis de Sade, from whom we derive the term sadism? And I intend to read from that book the dramatis personae, the characters, who give insight into the content and nature of the book as a whole. 120 Days of Sodom, the romance of the school for libertinage, dramatis personae, the Duc de Blangy, 50, built like a satyr, endowed with a monstrous member and prodigious strength. He may be regarded as the depository of every vice and every crime. He has killed his mother, his sister, and three of his wives. The Bishop of X is his brother. 45 years old, more slender and more delicate than the Duke, a nasty mouth. He is deceitful, a drat, a faithful sectary of sodomy, active and passive. He has an absolute contempt for all other kinds of pleasure. He has brought about the cruel deaths of the two children whose sizable fortune was left in trust with him. He is a nervous type, so sensitive he nearly swoons upon discharging. The President de Caval, 60, a tall, thin, lank man with sunken dead eyes and unhealthy mouth, the walking image of low license and libertinage, frightfully dirty about his body and attaching voluptuousness thereto. He has been circumcised. His erection is rare and difficult. It does take place, however, and he ejaculates almost every day. His tastes induce him to prefer men. All the same, he has no scorn for a maid. For singularities in his tastes, he has a fondness for old age and whatever is kin to him in filthiness. He is endowed with a member practically as thick as the Duke's. In late years, he has seemed as though unstrung by debauchery, and he drinks a great deal. He owes his fortune solely to murders and is nominally guilty of one, a dreadful one, whose details are contained in his biography previously given. When discharging, he experiences a sort of lubricious rage. It drives him to cruel deeds. De Set, banker, 53, a great friend of the Duke and his schoolmate. He is short, squat and chubby, but his body looks healthy, pretty and layer. He has the figure of a woman, and all a woman's tastes, by his little firmness deprived from giving women pleasure. He has imitated that sex, and has himself fucked at any time of day or night. He is also rather fond of a good mouthing. It is the only expedient which is able to afford him an agent's pleasures. His pleasures are his only gods, and he is constantly prepared to sacrifice everything to them. He is clever, a drat and has committed a profusion of crimes. He poisoned his mother, his wife, and her niece in order to assure his inheritance. His spirit is stoical, stalwart his heart, and absolutely insensible to pity. He no longer stiffens, his ejaculations are most rare, his instants of crisis are preceded by a kind of spasm which hurls him into a lubricious fury, dangerous for those who are serving his passions. Constance, the Duke's wife, De Set's daughter, 22 years of age. She is a Roman beauty with more majesty than finesse. Plump, but well constructed. A superb body. A unique ass. A model ass. Hair and eyes very dark. She is not without brains or wit. But too well senses the horror of her fate. A great fund of native virtue nothing has been able to destroy. Adelaide, De Set's wife, the President's daughter. A pretty little object, she is twenty, blonde, very tender eyes of a lovely animated blue. She has about her everything of the romantic heroine, a long, well-attached neck. Her one defect is her mouth, which is a shade large. Small breasts and a little ass, but all that, though delicate, is fair and well-moulded. A mind given to fantasy, a tender heart, excessively virtuous and believing. She secretly performs her Christian duties. Julie 
the president's wife, elder daughter of the duke. She is 24, fat, fleshy with fine brown eyes, a pretty nose, striking and agreeable features, but an appalling mouth. She has little virtue and even pronounced tendencies to uncleanliness, alcoholism, gluttony and whoredom. Her husband loves her for her defective mouth. This singularly appeals to the president's tastes. She has never been given either principles or religion. Aline, her younger sister, supposed daughter of the duke, really one of the duke's wives and the bishop's child. She is 18 has a very agreeable and fetching countenance, abounding health, brown eyes, an upturned nose, a mischievous air, though she is profoundly indolent and lazy. She seems, as yet, to have no temperament, and most sincerely detests all the infamies she is victim of. The bishop baptised her behind at the age of ten. She has been left in crass ignorance, knows neither how to read nor write. She abhors the bishop and greatly fears the duke. She is much attached to her sister, is sober and tidy, speaks oddly and like a child. Her ass is charming. Duclos, the first storyteller, 48, preserves her looks, is in good physical health, has the finest ass to be seen, brunette, full figure, very well fleshed. Chanville is 50. She is slender, well made, has lascivious eyes. She is a tribard, and everything about her proclaims it. Her present trade is pimping. She was once fair-haired, has pretty eyes, is long in the clitoris and ticklish in that part, has an ass much worn from service, but nonetheless untopped in that place. Martin is 52. She's a procuress too, a matronly dame, hale and hearty. Inner obstructions have prevented her from ever knowing any but Sodom's delights, for which indeed she seems to have been specially created. For, her age notwithstanding, she has the world's noblest ass. It is both broad and big, and so habituated to introductions that she can accommodate the weightiest engines without the flutter of an eyelash. She has pretty features still, but they are beginning to fade. De Grange is 56. She is even now the greatest villain who has ever lived. She is tall, slender, pale, and was once dark-haired. She is crime's personification. Her withered ass resembles marbled paper or parchment, and its orifice is immense. She is one-dugged, is missing three fingers and six teeth, fructus belly. There exists not a single crime she has not perpetrated or engineered. Her prattle is pleasing to the ear. She has wit, and is currently one of the outfitters most highly respected by society. Marie the first of the duennas, is the youngest at 58. She has been whipped and branded and was a servant to thieves. Her eyes are lacklustre and running, her nose crooked, her teeth yellow. One buttocks gnawed by an abscess. She has borne and killed 14 children. Louison, the second duenna, is 60. She is small, lame, one-eyed and hunchbacked. But for all that she has yet a very pretty ass. She is always ready for crime and is extremely wicked. She and Marie are both appointed as governesses to the girls, and the two following to the boys. Teresa, age 62, looks like a skeleton, has no hair, no teeth, a stinking mouth, an ass seamed with scars, its whole of excessively generous diameter. Filthy and fetid to an atrocious degree, she has a twisted arm and she limps. Fanchon, 69 years old, has been six times hanged in effigy and has perpetrated every crime under the sun. She squints, is flat-nosed, short, heavy, has no forehead, two teeth only. An erispellus covers her ass. A bunch of hemorrhoids hangs from her hole. A shonka is eating her womb. She has a burnt thigh and cancer gnaws her breast. She is constantly drunk and vomits, farts and shits here, there and everywhere all the time, and all unawares she is doing it. Harim of Little Girls Augustine, daughter of a Langedoc baron, 15 years old, alert and pretty little face. Fanny, daughter of a Breton councillor, 14, a sweet and tender air. Zelmia, daughter of the Comte de Turville, seigneur of Bous, 15, a noble look and a very sensitive soul. Sophie, daughter of a gentleman from Berry, charming features, 14 years. Cologne, daughter of a councillor to the Parliament of Paris, 
13 years old, exuberant health. Hebe, daughter of an Orleans officer, a very libertine heir, charming eyes. She is 12. Rosette and Michette both look like lovely virgins. The first is 13 and the daughter of a chalon sur officer. The other is 12 and is a daughter of the Marquis de Sinage. She was abducted from her father's estate in Bourbonnais. Their figures, the rest of their features, and chiefly their asses, are beyond all description. They were chosen from amongst 150. Harim of little boys. Zelamir, 13, son of a Poitou squire. Cupidon, same age, son of a gentleman from near La Fleche. Narcisse, 12, son of a nobleman, situated in Rouen, knight of Malta. Zephyr, 15, son of a general living in Paris. He is destined for the duke. Celadon, son of a Nancy magistrate, he is 14. Adonis, son of a judge of a Paris assize court, 15, destined for Caval. Hyacinth, 14, son of a retired officer dwelling in Champagne. Giton, page to the king, 12, son of a gentleman from the Nivernais. No pen is capable of representing the graces, the features, and the charms of these eight children, superior also to all the tongue is empowered to say, and chosen, as you know, from amongst a very large number. Eight fuckers. Hercule, 26, very pretty, but also a very mean character, the Duke's favourite. His prick measures eight and one quarter inches around and thirteen in length, plentiful discharge. Antinou is 30, a fine specimen of a man. His prick is 8 inches around and 12 inches long. Bum Cleaver, 28 years old, has the look of a satyr. His majestic prick is bent saber fashion. Its head or glands is enormous. It is 8 and 3 inches in circumference and the shaft 8 in length. A fine curve to this majestic prick. Invictus is 25. He is exceedingly ugly, but healthy and vigorous. The great favourite of Caval, he is continually aroused, and his prick is 7 and 15 sixteenths inch around by 11 inches long. The four others measure from 9 to 10 and 15 sixteenths inches long by from 7 and a half and 5 eighths inches around, and they are from 25 to 30 years of age. End of the introduction. Emissions I have made in it. 1. I must say that Hercule and Invictus are the one a very mean character and the other very ugly, and that not one of the eight has ever been able to enjoy either a man or a woman. 2. That the chapel is used for a toilet, and give details of this usage. 3. That the outfitters, male and female, had cutthroats with them and under their orders during their forays. 4. Give some more details about the elders' breasts and speak of Fanchon's cancer, also a few more touches to the descriptions of the children's faces.